Hello everyone, today we are going to take a look at the Beta FPV 75 Pro HD. Yeah, out of control. This is the Wax Nail Edition. You can also get this with uh, HD Zero, I believe, as well. And I will link it down in the video description. Uh, there's an analog version of this, which I released a couple of days ago. I will link the analog version review down in the video description as well. Wang. I'm not going to cover all the parts in this because mostly it's the same. Uh, we will weigh it up and we'll hit the individual parts that are different between this and the analog version after we get out of the flights. As per my usual, we will start off with the inside flight. It is a whoop and uh, I oftentimes fly whoops inside. Uh, so one of the things that you need to watch out for, and I alluded to this in the analog version, is we're running on a 1S battery and the voltage requirement for HD video is higher than it is for analog uh, VTXs. In this particular case, because it's the Waxdale, I think they call it the Mini Light, it's the 1S board, uh, it cuts off at a power level of 3.1 volts, and we're running a battery that at best starts at 4.35. So that's something to keep in mind. It's, you know, it's nothing wrong with the quad, it's just a limitation of having a quad with uh, an HD video transmitter in it. HD zero can go lower. I think in my testing, I think it went to 2.77, which some of you might be saying, well, that's awful low for a battery. What? If you're outside or you're fast and you're hitting the throttle, you can get down there pretty quickly depending upon your health and quality of your battery. And I will show you what happened to me because I forgot I was flying something with voltage requirements for the video. I was uh, spending most of my time flying the analog one that day and then it just kind of caught me out and uh, thankfully didn't do any damage and I also didn't uh, lose it. Um, but this is, you know, it's pretty big. It's bigger than you might think. It's running 45 millimeter props. Uh, my measurement, motor post or motor post, uh, I get almost 82 millimeters. Uh, so a 75 millimeter, 40 millimeter prop is probably gonna be more indoor friendly. And I said it in the analog ver uh, video, but the uh, Meteor 65 Pro is one I'm investigating more. I have been uh, a big, big advocate of running the 75 millimeter and 40 millimeter prop for quite a while, actually. Uh, but that 65 Pro, that was one that I liked how it flew, and I thought it was a real good balance between size oh, as well shit. as uh, thrust and the ability to fly like I want to fly. Now, if you want to fly differently and you want something this size that gives you longer flight time because it is bigger, it can handle a bigger battery. Uh, of course, we're a little bit limited at this current time in what capacity 1S batteries we are uh, able to put on there. Remember, it's got the Beta FPV BT20 as part of its connector, and I think Beta FPV is making the biggest battery uh, for 1S natively with that connector. You can find other bigger 1S batteries as far as capacity goes, and you could put a BT2 connector on it and probably get yourself flight time that is longer if you like to kind of do that exploratory sort of flight. In my case, I like to go kind of quick. Of course, if you're looking at the flight time of this flight, uh, you might be a bit disappointed, but remember, if you slow down, if you use less overall throttle, your flight time and energy use is gonna go up. So, something to keep in mind. It's uh, one of those trade-offs. Uh, the analog version uh, flew for somewhere between three and a half to four minutes for me between my inside and outside flights. Uh, I got different flight times again based upon the, the batteries themselves the quality of the use cases of those batteries how they've been taken care of as well as you know how i was flying was i punching out hard or was i rounding the corners really hard and, and using more throttle because whenever you go around a, a corner to keep your speed without having to level off 
you got to give it more throttle, right? You got to keep those props spinning in order to hold your line. For a 1S HD quad, though, it's pretty impressive. I just think that outside it might be somewhat limited and you got to worry about losing signal, losing video in your goggles. Okay, here's my uh, flight outside. I had hoped in the last couple of days that the weather predictors would be wrong and I would get some clearing, but this is actually on the same day that I did the outside flights with the analog version of this quad. Uh, so I got, had four batteries to work with, four 550 milliamp BT201S uh, batteries to work with. So I used two of them on the analog version and then used two of them on the uh, HD version. And the thing that uh, I've, I've talked about it already, but just in case anybody is kind of skimming through the video and may have missed it, is I do have wind, just like in the analog version, because it's the same day. 10 miles an hour is what the uh, weather app says. Uh, of course, we're in town, we're behind fencing, we're behind houses, so it doesn't affect us all the time, but I do see a fair bit of shakes. Uh, but I also know that I've beat the props up inside, so they might not be on their perfect pitch, and they not, might not have uh, all little pieces. Sometimes as you fly inside and you wang them around, uh, little chunks of your prop can come off, although they, they look okay. Uh, visually, you, sometimes it has a, a little bit of a small tick in them, and that can throw the balance off, and that could be a result of this. Uh, so I would presume on a nice calm day with good fresh props, on a quad that's just a lot less beat up than this one is, that it would fly at least as smooth as you see here, if not quite a bit smoother. And you'll note in this flight, I'm not doing any big maneuvers. I'm not doing anything, um, well, I don't typically do any big, big maneuvers outside of the punch outs. So I'm doing mostly flat flying with some snap moves as far as flips or rolls, and I'm just kind of uh, weaving in and out of items, which is a flight style I do like. Uh, that pod racing style, uh, but the reason for that is that if you punch out and you punch out too often or too long, you'll find that you lose video. Uh, you can remedy that. It's not part of the bind and fly, so it's kind of a shame that to remedy that you have to uh, take measures into your own hands. Um, I had a conversation uh, a day ago with someone who's going to get one of these and going to add uh, what is called a Pololu 5 volt regulator. Uh, Pololu is kind of a high quality brand as far as 5 volt regulators. They also make nice small ones that are reliable. And for many years, we had to use those on all sorts of micros. Uh, just the technology wasn't built into the flight controllers back then to where on 1S especially, you could uh, rely on it to power all the different components. So you would use a, a 5 volt regulator generally from Pololu. Oddly enough, the flight time is about the same, even with the HD VTX. So if you watch the analog video, you'll get flight time somewhere between three minutes and four minutes, depending upon how you fly. You may even get more than four minutes if you're cruising around uh, with less speed turns, so to speak. Okay, this section is where the VTX uh, just stops sending its signal out and I brown out. So I do one punch out. I come back down just fine. This is where I'm gonna do my, uh, I shouldn't say fine, I kinda of clipped that bush, but on this second punch out, bloop, the recording file ends because it just browned out and then it ended up in that straw that you see just off the corner of the fence. Eventually I do uh, locate it. Thankfully it did recover because sometimes I've heard with the Walksnail 1S VTX that sometimes if you lose signal, it doesn't necessarily come back or it doesn't come back very quickly. I, in my case, thankfully it did come back. Uh, as you can see, my feet kind of get closer and closer and then I uh, do locate the quad and I pick it up. So be careful. Don't be punching out time and time again. You may end up in the same situation. So something that was interesting about this when I first got it and I set it up is I, I found some video on this. And uh, this video is proof of concept that uh, Beta FPV does test or they tested this one before they sent it out. I'd like to think that all of them get a little office test as we see here in the video, but uh, that's something that we definitely can't prove. But if you order one of these, Check your VTX before you format it and see if there's any footage on yours. I'd be certainly curious to see what you find if you do buy one of these and you find some footage on there or not. Uh, either way, I'd like to know. It would make sense that because this was sent to me by Beta FPV for review that they did test it before sending out and maybe others don't get the same sort of treatment. So you can take that a few different ways. So just like in the analog version, you get uh, some assorted accessories. Oddly enough, mine 
So this canopy, no, this canopy is the new uh, micro light canopy. So it does not have the little helmet decorations, which I think is good. I think that's a waste of weight. I would never encourage anyone to actually put those on uh, their meteor and fly it. That's just adding weight. It's the first crash, they're probably going to come flying off and then your cat or dog's going to choke on them or hopefully you don't have a, a, small, a small child in the house that's going to choke on those. So I think dropping some weight with this canopy is a good idea and I have a spare so we'll weigh that. Uh, we've got some props, some screws, and we've got a little small screwdriver. We have their USB cable that goes to this uh, checker charger that does two at a time. And we've also got this little cable connector. I did not get it out because I've already got one of my own. Uh, this allows you to get the footage off of the VTX, which has eight gigabytes of onboard uh, recording. Um, I find that I can get about six flights sometimes on that. I guess in this one, no, that's right. I'm thinking of the 65 Pro. On this one, I, uh, with the eight gigabytes, I bet you could probably only get three to four flights on it before you have to dump it off. In the moment, I'm struggling to remember that fact, but keep in mind, you know, it depends on what you're recording. If you're recording at 1080p or if you're recording at 720p, because I believe it has both options. Of course, to fly this aggressively, you're going to need to set it to 720p mode. Otherwise, it's just not fast enough. To fly like I was inside the house, really to fly even slower, because uh, initially it was set to 1080p, I really struggled uh, to fly this inside really at all. So 1080p mode would be for certainly very slow, cruisy sort of flight. You can still get uh, your larger DVR files off of the uh, uh, VTX itself. So this is the little cable. This is the one I have been using and I've seen these with various lengths of heat shrink on them and various uh, how, lengths of how close it gets to the connector. And what's most important with this, because I do hear a fair number of complaints about this, is visually being able to see that it's getting started within the connector. And I don't hold it up close. I actually hold it back here and it oftentimes does take me a few moments to get it just lined up. Even when I've got it, it's like a USB port. You know how you go, you flip it over this way, you flip it over this way and you flip it back over this way and then you plug in a USB port on like a thumb drive or into your computer or something like that. It's a little bit like that. Uh, it takes me a good moment here to try to get it lined up and I try to see the connector as it starts going in there and then I push it in and that's all it needs. We don't need to get heavy handed with really our micros in any way. Once we get it lined up, it will go in with relative ease. It can fall out. So if you're handling this thing while you're pulling uh, DVR files off of it and it gets disconnected on Windows 11, you should see an error. Don't click that error and don't say okay to that error or anything. Just get it back in there and then click OK. It will move on to the next file. When it's done copying off all those files, go back to the file that it skipped. It skipped that file because it was pulling it off when it got disconnected. It'll still be there if you follow that process of not clicking the OK button and just moving on to the next file and then recovering that file uh, after you've gotten everything else off of it. But yeah, as you see here, I'm just kind of wiggling around and it came undone. So I don't know if I can show this very well, but uh, I had to get my flashlight out earlier when there were a question about this came up. Let me see if I can show this on camera actually. Hopefully you can see that red wire. That red wire is going right down to the, I think it's the blue wire pad. Right down in there. Can you see that? Hopefully I'm trying, but if you can't see it, and I didn't show it in the camera because I can't hardly see it in the display of this particular camera, do know that the VTX is soldered directly to the other side of the battery lead. So that's about as good as it's going to get. Uh, you could try the 5 volt rail on the board, but knowing what I know about my experience on the analog version, I don't think that's going to yield you any better results. The best results is going to be to add a Pololu a 5 volt regulator or another regulator brand that you believe in that's 5 volts. Uh, we've got some space above the VTX. Get some heat resistant double sided sticky tape. Uh, stick that down there and then run your wires around the board. Being sure to keep them clear of the props because that is important. Oh, the weight. We need to do the weights. The Waxnail version weighs 35 and 3 quarter gram. The HD Zero version should come in about a gram and a quarter less than that. Of course, the recommended battery is a 550. 
Uh, if you modify your own batteries, I'm sure you can find some that will fit in there that are larger capacity. And with that battery, we're getting real close to 50 grams. So the canopy, as I mentioned it earlier in the video, I said we'd weigh that up. I get 1.33 grams, so we've got the canopy, the micro light canopy, as well as the camera adapter to get it in there. Uh, the nice thing about this canopy is that you do have a screw right over there so you have fully adjustable camera angle if you want to fly a little bit slower you just lower it that'll naturally slow you down because we want to keep the horizon kind of the middle of what we're seeing in the middle of our camera image and that will naturally slow you down uh, you crank it up back up to where you know about where you fly or about where i fly and that will uh, get you the sort of camera angle and the flight speed that you saw in my video. And of course, if you want to build a walk snail whoop of other sorts and you want to uh, buy a canopy just, they have these for sale on their website, Beta FPV. Hopefully we'll see these also come to our FPV rear sellers uh, close to us all over the world. Something else that I wanted to test about that video issue, you know, when I looked at the SRT file, which records all the numerical data, it showed uh, the last voltage it showed before it went out or stopped recording was 3.7 volts. But before that, it showed 3.6 a few times. So I suspect it got down there below 3.1 at some point in that punch out. It just didn't record that to the SRT file for whatever reason. Maybe it just got too low and it didn't have... That information goes from memory to the file. It just didn't write it in that short a time where it... And then no more video uh, again you know one of the things you could do if you wanted this and you wanted to maintain your voltage as long as possible to your v vtx which in fpv is pretty important is to get that five volt regulator something i would want to test but i haven't had an opportunity because it needs to be outside testing is to just lower your transmit level on the vtx to see if that helps it should you know, less power, less power consumption. So less milliwatts out, less consumption going through the board. So that, that should help as well. We should be able to get this board down to 3.1 volts before it stops transmitting. Um, but if you do that quickly because of the load, you know, even if you're at 3.6, you do a two second punch out, which is basically the equivalent of what I did. It went from whatever the voltage was below to whatever it could handle pretty quick. Handle it once. But not twice so if you're going to freestyle this outside bigger battery which ah, i don't like flying with big batteries i always feel like it's dragging me around but you know we can always learn to handle those things or add a half gram hopefully pololu 5 volt regulator beta fpv you know what i want to see and i bet you most of the people watching this video know what i'm going to say make a 2s version why not make a 2s version of the 65 pro as well why not? Especially to solve these HD problems. Might not be race compatible. I don't think you could do a 1 and 2S. Every time I see a 1 and 2S quad, it performs really poorly on 1S and it performs really good on 2S. There's just no middle ground between there. Uh, so I think we just need to have separate products uh, for separate flight desires. If you would like to check out the Beta FPV Meteor 75 Pro HD running 40 millimeter props, I will have links down in the video description. As I said at the front of this video, also the review video for the analog version, as well as the 65 Pro analog version, which I mentioned earlier in this video as well. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.